Hi everybody, this is Amanda Ellis of amandaellis.co.uk and Facebook page Angelic Celestial Colours. Um, I'm making a video in August 2016. We've just gone through the Lionsgate energy, um, but this is the second in a series of what will be continual um, videos um, that I'll do going forward, which are channeling sessions. I can't speak, channeling sessions. Um, need to put my teeth back in. That is a joke, I do have my own teeth. Um, channeling sessions, so you're sending your questions in to me and I am giving them up to Archangel Metatron and Archangel Sandalphon and um, in all seriousness, I can't talk, in all seriousness, that thing about the teeth, I think actually Metatron is wanting to bring his humour into this because um, sometimes the questions that are posed are quite serious um, in nature because you know there are some se there's some serious stuff going on in our world but remember what we work with with Archangel Metatron is the energy of light okay and we must always keep it as light as possible even when we are faced with difficult challenging situations in the world or in our personal life. Metatron's got a great sense of humour and um, I don't know, I'm feeling he's in a bit of a playful mood today so we'll we'll see what happens. I also do know, because I've got the question sitting here beside me that have been sent in, that some of them are quite, um, uh, what's the right word, intense in terms of what they're asking. So that might be why he's just bringing in a playful energy at the start, okay, just to warm us up, he's saying. Um, he wants me just to spray um, one of the energies around myself and also for you to connect into. I want to use the Cosmos spray. This is the Cosmos Elemental. It's one of the um, element sprays, obviously, that we make with, um, or I make, uh, linked into Archangel Metatron's energy. Um, the Cosmos... Um, links up to you know the wider universe all that is and um, it's bringing in some really powerful divine light um, into the higher chakras and then through our bodies so let's just allow that to come down I'm just going to spray it around myself I'm also just going to shut the window because you can probably hear my dog Oops. excuse me hold on I've got a puppy and children playing outside so again it's that beautiful light feeling of lightness around today okay so we're linking into the cosmos energy and just to help me tune in a little bit further before we get to your questions i just would like to pull a card um these are labyrinth cards they were sent in for me uh they are the labyrinth wisdom cards by tony christie they were gifted to me by Annie, thank you very much, Annie. They're beautiful. I enjoy using them. And let's just have one, please, just to, as I say, it helps me just to tune into the flow of words that need to come through. Okay, that one is coming out. Invi oh, actually, that one's coming out. And then we've got plants on the bottom of the pack. So let's, let's look at the environment first. Um, that's a really beautiful card, isn't it? So we've got environment. And it says your environment reflects your life. Change your surroundings. Um, mm, that's 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 very interesting. Uh, change your surroundings. That almost sounds like a command, doesn't it? Um, I think we need to be very mindful of the um, the wider environment. Obviously, we've got the the sky represented here, the land, the air. Um, but also the um, the spectrum of the rainbow as well, rain, water. Um, but I'm I'm really wanting to hone in more personally in, into your homes actually, and into your living space um, where you sleep as well. Um, it's about keeping a clean, uncluttered um, environment, um, a pure space around yourself. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I can't work if I'm surrounded by enormous clutter. Um, I, I need um, I need to be able to breathe, you know, and I need to be able to um, sort out in my own head um, my, my thoughts in a clear manner. And that, for me, is reflected by my own environment. Funny enough, I just drove uh, down the road to Post and Parcels and there's a house near us. I suspect the person has got um, obsessive compulsive disorder and one of these people that are a hoarder, basically. And there is so much stuff now 
in their front yard that you you can't even walk up to the front door it's just full of old bikes old cars junk basically um sounds disrespectful but it is and i can't uh, i don't even want to think about the mindset of the person that lives in that house that's a really extreme example. Most of us are not living in that type of environment, but we are living with maybe outdated energies and that can be linked into possessions um, also, okay? Um, old clothes, um, old things, you know, there's a saying, isn't there? Only keep something that is beautiful or useful. So it feels as though we're being asked to um, sort out our personal environments in our homes but also to respect the wider environment. And then we've got the plant card coming in as well. Greenery. What does it say? It says plants are important for you right now. Spend time with plants and trees. Um, I actually um, answered somebody uh, this morning who was um, just, it was a question that came in overnight, um, who didn't uh, feel particularly grounded. And I just said, you know, got to get out in nature. You've got to get out barefoot. You, you know, you've got to get out and smell, smell the air and feel the earth underneath your feet. It's so, so, so important at this time. There are so many planetary um, energies coming in, um, new energies, new vibrations. And we're all feeling a little bit spaced out. Some people are suffering more than others. And nature is our greatest healer at this time. So um, that is important. OK, let's put those cards to one side for the moment. I'm sure they'll figure in other videos that I do at another date, um, but I want to just get into the questions themselves. So I'm just going to shuffle what we've got here, and I deliberately haven't looked at um, what I have in front of me, because these are just questions that have come in probably over the last month or so, and there are quite a few of them, and I just want to pick whatever I'm meant to pick today, okay? So <clears throat> Metatron's saying stop at this one. Okay. So this one comes in from Sarah. Um, oh, yeah, I know what this one is, actually. Yes, I read this recently. Hi there, Amanda. I hope you are well today. Thank you for your amazing videos. Thank you, Sarah. They're really helping me. I was wondering if you could ask Metatron about conceiving children. I have been trying to conceive for a few years, and I've, I've been advised to go for IVF. Does Metatron have any message about this? I would be grateful if you can ask him. OK, so we're going to widen this to all people who are maybe struggling with conception and straight away before I'm even having to really, well, I'm tuned in anyway, but it's just coming through straight away. I'm being asked once again to look at the environment card. OK, so we have a question about conception and fertility and we're linking back to environment. OK, we're linking back to um, chemicals and pollutants and um, hormones within the water supply. So um, that is a fact. It is something that is lowering uh, fertility, for example, in men. Um, and that's also linked into misuse of um, contraception, you know, pills that have flushed down toilets, um, or even if, for example, you're on the contraceptive pill, of course, it comes out um, in part in urine. So it's just there is um, there's a lot coming through about this. I just want to tune in in a focused way to it. And I'm going to use the orange flame attunement spray just to help me with this. So Conception and Fertility, Archangel Metatron. And it is Archangel Metatron that's coming through. Firstly, we want to extend our love and compassion to all who struggle to conceive, to bring through the gift of children in this lifetime. It is certainly true that the gift of a child is a precious one, is a responsibility, is something not to be asked for lightly. And yet so many of you look around the world at children who are conceived into families who do not want them, 
where they are abused, neglected, unaccounted for. And yet so many of you yearn for a child of your own. There is huge disparity here between those that are born who are unwanted and then become neglected and a large number of you who struggle to conceive the much wanted child who can help to transform your life with the gifts and blessings that children do. Each of you will have individual reasons and circumstances that may be preventing conception. But I say to you also that you live in a time of enormous powers of manifestation. Most of you are able to conceive and carry a child if it is your wish. Even to those who have been told this is impossible. I wonder how many of you know of people in your circle who struggled for years to conceive, gave up hope, and then, having given up all hope, suddenly the miraculous child appears. This is not an uncommon story. And what it indicates is that you can want and wish and hope for something too much. Manifestation works best when we, the angels, can clearly hear what it is that you require or desire. And then if it is in your highest soul's life plan, in this instance, to carry a child, we will help to bring that about. But you can block it by persistent, anguished cries for help. Every day, anguished cries for help that pile on more and more troubled, stressed, anxious energy into a situation that we are actually trying to heal. We know it is hard to relax when you wish for something so strongly and from a divine open heart space. But please know that children who are meant to be born will be born. And if the gift of parenthood or guardianship is one that you have requested pre-birth, pre-incarnation, nothing can actually stop that. No power on earth can stop that. Advances in medicine have come through to help many through the damage that has been done, particularly to the environment which is causing lowered fertility rates in many. And this is happening across the globe. So advances of medical technology are there to help counter the damage that man has done to his own natural environment. You may say this is not my fault and it is true that this is a collective fault. Not one individual has caused this. Yet each individual can do their part to heal the environment that is out of balance by healing their own space around themselves, their, their piece of land upon which they live, their city, an act of community spirited action to help address the balance. It is also true that some of you that struggle with fertility do so 
via ancestral pain that you carry. Go back, ask me to heal the ancestral chain, any pattern of loss linked into childbirth or carrying a child to term or conception itself. See yourself as a fully functioning man or woman able to carry, conceive a child. See yourself in the most optimum health that you can be. Feel that with every fibre of your being, however difficult it may be to imagine that at this current time. It does not serve you to see yourself as barren or any other negative word that you may throw at yourself or society throws at you. I, Archangel Metatron, go govern the realm of time and space and you can ask me to bend time to give you more time and to highlight those moments within a particular month where you are at your most fertile and ready for conception. Please also link in to, I'm going slightly out of the out of the channeling here because he's asking me to look for a card which is here it's on the bottom of the pack so we had environment we had plants he's wanting me to show you this card pleasure okay just I want you if this question is um, calling you I want you to look at that card of pleasure when you struggle to conceive what happens is that pleasure goes out of the window the joy of sexual union, of bringing a child in in a loving way, goes out of the window. It becomes mechanical. And to those of you who are still trying, um, and maybe it's taken longer than you would have hoped, can we bring the pleasure principle back, is what Metatron is talking about here. And this is the union of man and woman that create the child in the first place. Um, love, which is shown by the heart. And I'm wanting to also talk about touch, um, how important touch is. Um, we've got like fireworks exploding here in the sky. It's about I don't know if I said this at the beginning, but I was wanting to say something about Metatron sometimes has a sense of humour to even the most difficult questions. And I felt he was in a bit of a playful mood today. And what he's trying to do is take away the stress and the um, pressure, you know, the other word pressure from this whole set situation around conception. OK, so to bring back actually what making a child is about which is pleasure also it's the union of man and woman love union sexual chemistry fun all of that if we can get back into that energy as opposed to it becoming a very clinical thing which is sort of this is the time we have to do it and that almost creates a block in some of us to the natural act of conception Think of it this way, if you're a little soul hovering around, wherever they hover around, before they drop down into the body at the moment of conception, because I personally believe that's what happens. I believe, and that's what I've been told, that the soul drops in at conception. Um, you want to make that pathway in for the soul as light and as cheerful as possible. The soul finds it harder to come in when there is this pressure and intensity and stress around it. And I know that that is what I've just said there is somebody has heard that and it's and it's um, 
you're you're relating to it. Okay, so I'm not going to labour the point, but that's an important that's an important part of it. So I think the message is keep it light, keep the energy of hope there. Um, we can't do anything about the wider environment. One one of us, one person at a time, can't do anything about the wider environment that is causing some of these fertility problems. But we can help heal our own environment around ourselves. Okay. Um, our own land, our own home. Um, I hope that helps. We might come back to that at another time. Um, but I want to move on to the next question now. Okay, so thank you for sending that one in. And I wish you luck. Anybody that's watching this that's struggling, I really wish you luck. Um, okay, oh, we get personal here, don't we? He's, he's telling me to say, tell you something. Um, I will tell you something. Um, I've got two children, uh, two girls. And I had, like many women, had a miscarriage in between the two of them early on, really struggled to have my second child. Um, and I was a little bit later having my children. So I was sort of nudging, um, I don't know, 38, 39 by the time I had my second um, or tried to conceive my second. And um, I was starting to worry. I was starting to get stressed that it wasn't going to happen. And I did use a colour spray in my room the night that I believe I conceived my second child. And the colour was coral. OK, this I mean, this one here is one linked to Christ in um, my particular range. Um, the one that I used on a particular night was a coral. It was a coral spray. The point is that coral as a colour is about ending suffering, you know, ending a suffering of it's not going to work. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be a mum. Um, something's wrong with me. All of that, letting that whole pattern, which is more really about self-abuse, go. And of course, coral, if you put the two colours together, it's about love, which is pink and yellow, which is joy. That's exactly what Metatron's just been talking about. Bring the joy back. Bring the joy back into lovemaking, into creating a child, and make sure, um, obviously, that that union of, of love and joy is there. And um, it, was a, it was a coral angel energy that I used. This one would work probably just as well. Um, not promising anything here. I'm just saying what worked for me. And um, it did. So I'm going to spray this around myself now. Also, coral is linked into magic, manifestation and miracles as well. So anybody that's struggling at the moment, let's just send you out some of this beautiful coral energy. OK. And as we send out this beautiful coral energy to you, it's also sending it out to those incoming souls, making them feel that there is an energy of love and joy around you that is tempting, that is inviting, that is almost saying, yes, I want to I want to go to that person because that feels a lovely energy to come to. OK. Um, yeah, I want to leave it there. Thank you. Right. Let's move on to the next question. Put that one down. And we're going to go to another one. Just shuffle them so I don't know what we're getting. And I'm being told to go to the bottom of this page. Okay, it's not a, it's not a subject I know much about here. So um, I think it's uh, brought in. Uh, it's a question from Claire Cullen. It's on twin flames. Um, is a twin flame a real thing, please? Does everyone have one? Also, I have heard it can be a sister or a grandparent even. Is this true? And if so, why do people make it out to be a romantic thing? Thanks, Amanda and angels. Hope people are not fed up with this question as I find it confusing still. Yeah, I find it confusing still as well, Claire, actually, because there's a lot written about twin flames and um, there doesn't seem to be a consensus out there. Um, and of course, some people get confused between twin flames and soulmates as well. I think before we tune into Metatron, the one thing I do know here is that a soul, um, a soulmate relationship um, can definitely be somebody other than a romantic partner, you know, or a lover. Um, it absolutely can be um, somebody else in your life. Um, so you, you talk about sister, grandparent, even. I mean, yes, yeah, a soulmate effectively is somebody who comes in 
to help you learn in a huge way. So they come in to maybe mirror something to you. They come in often to press your buttons um, because there's something that you need to you need to be triggered by that person. It may well be also that there's some karma linked in as well that you need to work through. Um, but they're part of your soul group. They are part of, um, we all have soul groups that we come from, which is why when you bump into somebody, you can gravitate towards particular people's energy and it just feels comfortable. And another person might be saying exactly the same message and it doesn't um, it just doesn't sink in or it doesn't you, you don't you don't relate to it. Um, and that's because the one the person that you relate to is the person who's in the same soul group energy as yourself. OK, so there is a, a meeting of minds, a meeting of hearts, as well as a meeting of souls. Um, I believe also that soulmate relationships don't have to last forever. Um, it can be somebody that's, it can be romantic, it can be somebody that comes in in a very big way in your life, you might spend a huge portion of your life with, or it might be a very short period of time. Um, but then when the lessons are learnt, or the gifts have been given, um, the soul always wants to carry on and keep learning. And it may well then look for another soulmate to um, bring in the next level of um, I want to say training, <laughs> because really souls, which is what we are, we've got this human shell and this human body, but really we're all souls and we're all souls in training. And we're in training for going back to that one consciousness at some point in the future, getting off the whole karmic wheel and the cycle of reincarnation. Um, so let's look at Twin Flame, okay? Um, I'm going to ask for a card on Twin Flame. I'm going to put back those three. Although I don't think environment's going to come up, unless Metatron really is playing games today. Let's ask for a card here. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, I want to have that. I was just thinking the green one was the wrong way around, but actually the green one is the energy of love. So let's keep that one out and let's have one more. So Twin Flame. Just thinking on that. Isn't that an interesting one to get? We've got love, we've got break free, and we've got twin flame. Right, I'm going to go straight into a channeling, channeling about this, but I'm going to hold this energy up because it feels important. I'm going to use the blue aquamarine throat energy. Metatron's telling me to keep my eyes open because I need to look at this card. Twin flames. Two people. One soul. Separated. Yet together. Separated by time. By space. By dimension, diametrically opposed, yet one, a contradiction of sorts, a circle of eternity, a circle of eternal love, a love that needs to be free. A love that needs to be separate. A love that will come back to oneness as the wheel completes. But not before. Two fragmented souls that are one. And will be one again. But will they be one again in this lifetime? Not easily so. For each seeks a different experience. To come back together. To bring completion. 
of all experiences, of all tastes, all sounds, all vibrations, having been completed, not possible by one aspect of soul alone, which is why the two are separate. Separate yet within the same circle. May be destined to meet in one lifetime, but not necessarily to stay together. Working best when apart in earthly incarnation. Working best when together when back in wider consciousness after physical death. Human romanticism wants these two to be one in this life. Yet it makes no sense if each needs to break free to experience different aspects of this earthly incarnation. You cannot forget your twin flame. They are within you. You are within them. You do not need to physically be joined, constrained, by each other in this life. You already are within. It is but the outward expression that is separate. Complementary colours of violet and yellow showing two sides of the same coin. Yet only one side can be shown at any one time. Love. Love is both giving and receiving. Allow yourself to be loved and be loved. To be, to truly love another as you love your twin flame necessitates, desires, requires you to let them go because you know they will always come back. They cannot not come back. They are part of you. I'm drawn to the green and the red again, the complementary colours. A feeling of twin flames uniting over dimensions. Being able to link with each other in dream state. Very real don't want to call them dreams, very real experiences in dream state where the union can be one. That is the best place for them to be. Many who believe they are in twin flame relationships in this lifetime are not. They are in soulmate relationships. It is not impossible for you to be in a twin flame relationship on the earth, but it is rare. It is more likely in somebody who is on the last wheel, the last cycle of the, in of the reincarnation process. So if you're an old, old soul that's been here many, many, many times, you've already seen a lot of it. This is your last time. This is what you intend to be your last time before becoming pure spirit again, joining the wider consciousness, not wanting to come back into physical body. And you might think, oh, yeah, yeah, I want that. But actually, do you really? But if you fulfill those criteria, it's more likely that you can find your twin flame. But you don't need to. You don't need to search for something 
in daylight hours that is already there in the dusk. Now that might go against everything that you have read or thought or feel about twin flame relationships, but it's what's coming through for me to say to you today. Um, I'm going to draw one more card to help us. Metatron is talking about the perfection of imperfection. Um, and that doesn't mean imperfection is horrible. He's, he's talking about the perfection of imperfection in relationships. Um, this one again. Um, what does he mean by that? The perfection of imperfection. Most of you are here to learn still about self-love, to really be able to accept and love yourself. It's very hard for human beings to be able to do this because of society's conditioning and much more besides. How much greater is it for somebody to fall in love with you, with all your flaws, all those parts of yourself that you feel are incomplete or wrong and for another to be able to look you in the eyes and see only perfection. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Because when a twin flame comes in, okay, what he's, okay, sorry, I'm going back a step here. He's saying to me, a twin flame comes in when you have mastered self-love, when you have been able to really look yourself in the mirror, and I'm talking here not just physically, I'm talking about all aspects of who you are, you know, x-raying in right into who you are, when you really love yourself, when you really accept yourself, when you've really experienced all of what it is to be this half of the soul, then if your other if your other other partner the other twin flame also feels the same that's when it comes back and then that flame that is able to be um created is the most amazing beautiful fire it's a holy fire it's sacred but up to that point in time we're dealing with soulmates and there's nothing wrong in that enjoy and have pleasure with your soulmate, however long they are with you. They might be with you for your whole life, or you might have a number of different soulmates throughout your life. I know I said before that soulmates can also be other than other than romantic, and yes, I believe they can. Um, but I'm talking here more about the romantic soulmate that comes in. Let's just see if there's anything else wanting to come through being told to use the cosmos one. Twin flames. Your twin flame may not even be incarnated on this planet at this time. Your twin flame may very well be incarnated in a different place and in a different dimension. Would you be so selfish as to call them back from their mission just so that you can feel complete here in your mission on earth? that's a question mark isn't it and I think if you really think about that the answer has to be no if you really love somebody you set them free to experience everything they want to because you're going to come back together you can't not I just feel the overriding message with that is enjoy the soulmate relationships they are rich you know there is a richness there there is pleasure there there is still stuff to learn there and that's what this whole crazy world is all about it's about learning, refining, evolving. Okay, let's move on. One more question. Let's put that one back. We've answered that one. Just 
seeing which is the best one to fit in with uh, the other two. I'm looking for um, a question that came in, which I don't think I've printed out, um, but I want to answer. So apologies, because I don't know who it was who sent it in, but it was a question. It's quite an intense question. It's like we've had three quite intense questions, which is why I want to end with this third question. It's a question on suicide. Um, and it is a, it was a question on why, uh, why does it seem to be that so many young people are taking their own life okay so we started with birth and conception and we're going to uh, end this with looking at potentially why many young people seem to be opting out and choosing death as a way out <clears throat> and metatron is actually straight away bringing in when we talk about suicide you can have slow suicide. Suicide doesn't just have to be, you know, the act of taking an overdose of pills or slitting your wrists. Um, suicide can be a slow suicide in terms of drinking yourself to death, taking too many drugs so one day you are going to just, you know, kill yourself. It can also be in people that sign up to um, fundamentalist religions and give up their own life to take another so I'm talking here about suicide you know the suicide attacker or the person who just um yeah gives up their life basically for something um which they think at some level is the answer but of course isn't and actually sometimes it's about escapism as well so uh let's just have one card metatron just to help me start off this quite serious topic and he's saying just so that you know that I have em I personally have empathy with this I do um, my grandmother committed suicide when she was probably in her uh, 50s um, and I remember her as a very loving lady and uh, she had some mental health problems though in her life that you know a few generations back were not um, taken seriously and she didn't receive the help that she needed at the time and so, uh, yeah, I've, I've had a history of suicide in my family and there's also been some attempts of suicide by another family member as well. So I feel I have something to say here, but I'm also going to bring Metatron in. He's wanting me to show this one. OK, so let's look at this. Um, it's a very beautiful, golden energy. Um, sacred path you're on a path of discovery and growth take the next step it doesn't mean take the next step in terms of taking your own life obviously um, I'm drawn to the fact there is that huge mountain in the backdrop backdrop and it's almost as though that peak of that mountain for some people just feels so impossible to reach um, you know if you're standing there that's the start and you know in this lifetime you've somehow got to get up here. Some people just don't even get out of this bit of the labyrinth to get on that path. They opt out before they're even halfway up the mountain of life. And of course life is sacred. So we're going to ask Metatron here um, for some guidance please, particularly um, younger people, because that was the question about why many younger people are wanting to opt out. OK, so he's actually saying to me to show you that card as well. OK, um, sort of self-explanatory, isn't it? Before I get into any channeling. If you look at that card, um, what have we got there? We have got a reminder to anybody out there who are feeling um, disillusioned, wanting to give up, or you know somebody in that state that you always, always, always have the opportunity to access this complete, raw, divine power that is able to transform anything that is around you. So, um, so often the problem which causes somebody to think, I need to opt out, I can't, I can't cope with life anymore, I'm, I'm just getting out of here, um, the 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 
the solution can be found. It can also be found in a community. I'm looking at these this group of stones here and just showing how all of those stones link to each other, you know, and I'm hearing the word isolation hugely in Metatron is putting it in great big capital letters, almost as if I'm looking at myself on screen. If I was watching this video now and we're talking about suicide, I'm flashing up the word isolation as a huge cause of the problem. OK, feeling isolated. Now, you can talk about isolation in terms of friends and um, family, um, feeling isolated from that. Um, and that is obviously something that needs addressing by um, somehow getting yourself back out there or for young people to get themselves back out there. But more than anything, this is an isolation from your true divine essence. Um, we have forgotten how powerful we really are. Um, and more than anything, so many young people feel disempowered, completely disempowered not linked into that golden light within them, not linked into their own divinity, um, not linked into their full potential. Um, certainly within the Western world, although this isn't obviously um, just a Western world problem. Um, oh, well, actually, no, he's saying, I wonder, I, I'm actually wanting to put a question out. I wonder what the rate of suicide is in um, other countries around the globe who are battling poverty and I would think probably much lower strangely than some of the societies here in the west which on the surface have more but of course we have more materialism but materialism can be good because we all need a certain standard of living but it can be an empty it, there is an emptiness that comes with it as well you can't buy a car or a nice piece of clothing or you know anything that you, money can buy is never going to give you soul peace. It can't. Soul peace and soul happiness has to come from you linking into this divine power that you have. Now, whether that's Metatron, whether it's Christ, whether it's Buddha, um, whether you know it, any of the religions around the world, it doesn't matter. But you need a connection to your true nature, which is light. It is. That's what you are. You know, at the moment of birth, you drop in and you know that you are the most, you know, babies know that they are the most beautiful, amazing thing on the planet. You know, um, we forget that. And I think the world is very difficult for a lot of young people at this time. So let's go into. Oh, sorry. These cards are really very, very powerful today. I wasn't, didn't think I was going to be using them quite as much of this, but there's also this one coming up, um, which I have to show you. Apparently, um, your psychic powers are being enhanced. Use this gift wisely. OK, a lot of young people, particularly young people now, are highly sensitive, are highly psychic. Um, we have this breed of whether you call them, you know, it gets rather confusing. Are they indigos, crystals, whatever? I'm writing a book at the moment, actually. Well, I've been doing it for a couple of years. It's still quite a way off, so I'm not promoting a book here. But the point is I'm I'm writing a section which is on these children. And I'm saying children because actually I'm talking young adults as well. Metatron just calls them his diamond children um, because it's just a term which um, is all encompassing. OK, so I'm talking about this new breed of crystal diamond children diamond young adults coming in who are highly sensitive. But look at that picture, actually. That's really interesting. That pyramid is actually cut in half, OK? The top part of it, which I would say is the third eye and above, it's the link to spirit, it's the higher chakras, it's the crown, is completely cut off from the lower, what I would say here is the lower body. And that's the problem, um, that uh, so many of these youngsters are not linked into their their own spiritual power. Um, and so the realm of the angels of Archangel Metatron, who has a special place in his heart for young people, is 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 just wanting to open up his arms to help and to say, I, I will be your guide. I will be your teacher. I will be the one that helps you from a place of darkness to light. Um, so I'm just going to put those three energies down and we're going to spray the orange and go into some live channeling. So some guidance for young people. 
who are feeling that the way out is to end their life. You cannot end your life. Life is eternal. Your soul is eternal. You can stop this particular incarnation, but you cannot stop the eternity of your soul. Make peace with where your soul is in this lifetime. You are loved, you are needed and you are wanted here right now. Your sensitivity is a huge gift to the world. Your talents, which at the moment you may feel are untapped, are an advantage and a blessing to this world. If you have not yet found those that you can relate to, there will be, they will be there, they are out there. Ask me to link you up with like-minded people, but you also need to help me also to make efforts. What I'm seeing here is making efforts to physically leave the house. So this is the thing about isolation. And he's saying he can help to bring like-minded people to you to bring comfort, support, um, companionship, um, fun, which I know feels a long way off the radar for some people at the moment. But he needs your help also to physically leave the front door so that you can find them. I want you just to feel the strength of Archangel Metatron coming in to anybody that is linking into this message. And we're bringing in an orange light, beautiful orange light all around you helping to soak up whatever shock, whatever trauma has brought you to a place of feeling abandoned and lonely and replacing that with strength and courage and love. And there is a message here for the wider community, which is if we look back at this initial card, the person in trouble which is what I'm seeing here at the back, that needs that huge influx of light to come in to help them, is also supported by the wider community around. No one person is an island. Everybody needs other people as well. So this is about finding your tribe. And we, as um, citizens of this world, seeing some of our young people in trouble, have a responsibility also to help them. And so in your own way and in your own time, in your own communities, in your own streets, reach out, smile, offer a hand of friendship to those that may be in trouble. Okay. And I know I said three questions, but I'm just going to... I'm not going to do another question. I'm just going to pull a final card for a final message for all of us. Oh, we had that at the start, didn't we? Plants. Okay, why has it come up again? Let's have another look at it. I'm being drawn to the roots, the roots of the tree. I'm going to read the message that goes with that one. I think a card that comes up twice in, in something when we've been dealing with some pretty big topics warrants actually reading the message. Plants have a particular significance for you right now. Plants do not need to struggle or think or worry. They just grow. Flower, die, and sow their seeds for the next cycle of life. When a flower blossoms, it does so spontaneously. It smells sweet and is beautiful for the sake of being sweet and beautiful. Contemplate the simplicity of plants' existence and consider how you can bring this so simple approach into your life. Plants and trees lead a whole and balanced existence. They do not dwell too much on one aspect over another. If a plant 
focused only on its roots, it would never blossom or produce fruit. You need to adopt a similar approach, allowing all aspects of your life to flourish equally. Working closely with plants is good for you. Consider buying some new plants or tending your garden. Learn about the healing properties of plants. Include more plant and vegetable foods in your diet. And remember all your flowers of tomorrow are in your seeds of today. Get planting and get growing. It's a lovely, lovely message. I have to say, I'm quite struck with that myself because I was literally going to go to the garden centre today and buy myself some new plants just for the pots outside my front door. And um, I hadn't realised, it was, I hadn't linked it into this message of this card, but I, I obviously I am now and I've read that. It's that thing about getting your fingers into the soil, into the earth, um, respecting the, as it just said there, the the flow of, of plants and how they flower and um, and then the leaves on the trees fall away. It's the, like the death and rebirth, but it's death and rebirth in this life. It's not opting out of this life. It's saying allow the old to fall away for the new you to be born. So I hope that's helped today. I'm going to leave it there for now. Please keep sending questions in and I'll do another one of these sessions soon. Much love, everybody. Bye bye.